back at it on a Monday, keeping this weekly vlog thing going and uh, immediately straight to it. Need to check out the status of the R32 GTR that Ernie is already working on. All right, we're heading outside into the garage right now where we are making some progress on the R32 GTR by getting a new engine. So the engine that I showed you in the last video is not the engine we're gonna end up using. Somewhere around here, Ernie has a car out that is a bit of a project. You can see the 32 still sitting on the trailer. Haven't even bothered to take it off because um, why, I guess, until we had an engine solution. But uh, let me find this car. All right, so the plan is the engine is gonna come out of this R33 GTR, which is kind of just something we've had laying around the shop. Uh, it was gonna maybe be a drag car, it was maybe gonna be another race car. So far that hasn't happened, but it does have an RB26 in it that runs, so this is gonna be it. So while the engine is coming out of that car, uh, the Supra, not my Supra, uh, one in inventory here is getting worked on. We have a customer wanting to come and see this car tomorrow. So we're going through just doing some detailing on it. Uh, Brandon's gonna polish up the headlights here, uh, do some kind of final touches on it, make sure this is as presentable as it can possibly be uh, for when the customer gets here. The Toyota Supras have been interesting in that uh, they've been really tough to find in Japan, uh, like good ones in nice condition. Uh, so this silver one is pretty cool. Uh, it has the factory RZ rear spats and the factory RZ side skirts, which is something that is available uh, on the Japan cars. The front bumper is a top secret front bumper, so early version of top secret. I do have a different front bumper and lip for it, the OEM one. So if the buyer gets here and decides that he wants that look uh, over the top secret look, that is an easy switch for us. Uh, the wheels that are on here, uh, maybe not my favorite. Uh, definitely something I would change if this was my car, but uh, it does look cool, does look presentable. The inside of the car itself, uh, is really nice. It's a really good, clean, healthy car. Original factory twin turbo, six speed. So the get rag uh, with the turbo motor in here. So I think he'll be pretty happy with it. Hopefully this is gonna be a good deal for him. The difficult thing uh, about buying a car like this uh, in the US, especially if you're gonna register in California, instead of buying a US model one, is that to do carb compliance on this, so that's California Air Resource Board, to be able to register this car in California, the state of California, charges you an extra $11,000, and you have to do some modifications to the vehicle's emission system. If you were buying a US Supra already in California, then assuming that the car is not heavily modified, you could just register it the way that it is. Uh, so, Unlike the Skyline, where you have no option but to buy the imported one because we didn't have them in the US, the California uh, buyer for uh, Mark IV Supra is gonna be a little bit different because you have to really, really want the right-hand drive one or it has to be an incredible deal, which, um, I mean, this one is both, so we'll see what he says. Hey right, guys, the week continues. We are uh, here in Mid-City, Los Angeles. Uh, I am hanging out at uh, Race Service tonight, which is a really cool, fun place, agency, marketing agency, I guess you could say. My buddy Larry Chen is having a little event here tonight. He's going to be doing some speaking and some talking, so we're going to go out kick it with Larry. Uh, there's always cool cars here. Great little burger spot popping off right here. We're definitely going to eat that. Pulling up, there's some, some sick Toyotas here. We got a wide-body Celica, got a Corolla wagon and uh, always in size rate service, I'm sure is gonna be something sick. Starting to fill up a little bit in here. It's kinda loud, have some pretty sick cars though. favorite race service car is of course the Miller Genuine Draft NASCAR. This thing is so sick. Uh, James, one of the partners here, uh, owns this thing and it is so rad. 
So while I'm waiting for Larry to go on, I uh, got myself a smash burger here from Gam Gam Burger. Uh, this place is really cool. They make kind of a Japanese style burger. His wife is Japanese and they have a mini truck as uh, their little transport vehicle for moving this stuff around, which is pretty sick. So smash this burger and then say what's up to Larry. Oh, good. It's going to start going down. Do you want me to ask you any specific questions? You should just do it for me. <laughs> All right, so it's been a super cool event. We are gonna get out of here because it's getting late, and of course these people want to wrap up, but uh, so sick to come here and see so many of the cars, see the race service family, kick it with Larry, and uh, big day at the office tomorrow, so we're out. Progress on the R32 continues. The engine is out uh, of the donor car, which is a black R33, coincidentally, which would also be a really cool race car for somebody, maybe someday. Uh, but that is out of here. The R33 engine right here that is gonna start getting taken apart when the R32 engine comes out. Have to switch some stuff over from this engine over to that engine. But Ernie's already kind of started taking this apart and breaking it down. There's a few things that we'll need to get, like all new belts, gaskets, stuff like that. All the turbo side stuff is gonna come off. I'll get replaced with the stuff that I have. So uh, there is a ton of stuff to do here for sure. Also going on around the shop right now, we have this new uh, R32 GTR that just came into inventory. It's really nice, has the uh, N1 style front bumper on it. Uh, put some R34 GTR wheels on it. And this car came in, it had stock wheels. We have some white R32 GTRs already inventory that have stock wheels on them, the, the OEM R32 wheels. The R34 wheels always look good on the 32s. This one has an exhaust, uh, has the, uh, little Nismo uh, rear lip on the back of it there, but overall really clean car. So it's getting uh, just wiped down right now for inventory photos, really super clean dash. Generally that bubbles up, but not on this one. So this car will be coming to our inventory soon. And I think Andrew's gonna probably try to shoot it today. We've got an R34 GTR that showed up uh, right behind it that is going through some inspection and stuff before uh, getting shipped to its new owner. And then another interesting little challenge that we have here in California is registering cars in California requires a special type of compliance. Uh, so CARB compliance with the California Air Resource Board. This is an S15 uh, Spec R that we just got in. A uh, customer bought this car but wants to register it in California. So part of that is putting what's under the hood back to stock. So factory air box and stuff here. This will then go to G&K Automotive uh, in Santa Ana, California, where we pay an extra $15,000 to be able to register this car in California uh, with California plates so you can drive it on the road. Uh, in the sea of car covers here, we have one standing out. This is an R33 GTR in wine red. I put it uh, in the previous video. This is officially on our website now for sale. So if you're seeing this and you're looking for a red R33 GTR, uh, it is rare, it is hard to find. It is a cool color. It's completely stock, really good overall condition. So lots going on there. We do have a customer coming to check out uh, another inventory car that I'm particularly fond of. It is a silver Toyota Supra. So I'm gonna go look the car over right now before he gets here and kind of go through that uh, a little bit top to bottom, make sure that there's no last minute things that need to be touched up. Uh, the guys went through it yesterday. Um, so hopefully it should be all good, but I'll show you guys that car now. So here is the Supra, we got it moved out. I know we looked at this a little bit yesterday, but kind of just giving it a once over, look around, uh, make sure that nothing is missing or seems off or needs any attention. But this one looks overall really good. I know the guy's already test drove it today, so it's gonna run great like a champ. Hopefully the guy likes it. So 50-50 on the front bumper, I don't totally love it. It is an original top secret bumper, which does make it pretty cool from back in the day. However, I do have a brand new bumper new in the box with a front lip for him uh, so when he gets here he's going to get to make a decision uh, if he wants to buy the car one and two if he wants to take delivery of it with this bumper on it or if he wants us to put the oem bumper and lip back on it which is something we could definitely offer to him it's a rad car it makes me miss my supra for sure which i need to get down to Greddy to check up on 
That has been such a work in progress lately, but it is uh, kind of my dream build. It is my dream car, and I'm really, really excited that there's some progress is getting made there, but uh, just a little bit of a matter of time, I guess, until we get the next thing done. More California car things going on here. This car is really cool. This is my buddy June's car, June Amai from Kaido House. Uh, if you're familiar with that brand, they make really, really cool die cast collectibles. Uh, he got to enjoy this car in Japan, which is really rad. He's got his stickers on it. Fuji Speedway sticker. Uh, he came and participated in our Fuji Speedway track day, which was really, really cool uh, for people that get to experience that. Basically what we do is around Tokyo Auto Salon time, we rent Fuji Speedway, allow customers that have cars in Japan to come out, drive on track, totally exclusive. So no other cars on track, just top rank customers. So mostly people all know each other or get to know each other on those days. But this car is here now in the United States, which is awesome. Is a black v-spec which is rare uh, this car is super super great but what's interesting about it is it just went through california compliance and as we were talking about earlier with having to go through uh, like the s15 and do the compliance here is the emission sticker so basically this sticker is what you get when you complete california compliance um, it goes to state referee goes through emissions, goes through carb, goes through smog, and after that you get all your documents, your stickers, and your certifications, and then you can get a California title, California license plates, and you can drive the car on the road like any other car in California. You just have to smog it every two years. Look where we are. Hi guys. What up, Johnny? <laughs> Dang, we are, we're doing some, uh, some Pennzoil things right yeah. now. Giving away a car or something. Johnny is giving away this car. This thing is so sick. I can't believe you're just giving this away. I know I want to keep it and track it, but you know, someone else gets to it. Still. Isn't there like a part of you like at the end of this or like as it gets more realistic that this car is going to be leaving you that you start to like feel like it wasn't happening? Yeah, I mean already it's like I'm already yeah. tripping out about it. I feel like I would not want to give it away. It's yeah. so sick. It's Is this like the factory paint color on this or is this wrapped? Yeah, factory paint color. Dang, that's um, insane. And yeah, we just, you know, color match makes it look really nice with the hood, carbon hood and all the nice Varus accents. Varus always has really amazing wide body kits. Yeah, it yeah it's the very first so kit. Nice. So nice. This is so sick. Wow. It's such a cool color. I can't believe that that's the factory paint. Yeah. Wow. That's so sick. You know what that would look great on? S15. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Dang, this is so cool. So, wow. This is sick. Yeah, remark exhaust. I mean, I'm, I'm going to put some of the things back to 50 state emission legal mm, for yeah, yeah. compliance purposes, yeah, but yeah. the trunk's gonna be full of pens, oil, tools, the, the parts, everything. So whoever gets the car can do whatever they want to do. Um, but I want to make sure that's in compliance first. Dude, this thing is so <laughs> rad. This is sick. So this was at SEMA last year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah SEMA last year. And then, uh, yeah, with advanced pens, oil, and diehard tools, right? Yeah. Diehard tools. Dang. So somebody's going to win this. Um, definitely don't enter though, because you're going to lower my chances of winning it myself, which I mean, I entered. <laughs> so I, mean, like, I could win this car. That'd be so sick. And yeah. then I would track it. That would solve all my GCR problems. So, all right, cool. Well, um, I'm going to make you show me around your shop a little bit and then sure. we're going to knock out this next little Penzo a bit. Okay. Sick. I a mess, but. Uh, no, it's great. I see another RX, I see an RX-7 hidden in there with a cool Penzo oil livery that I've also seen at SEMA before. And uh, this, is, this is a fun one though. I mean, this is really rad. This car is really rad because it kind of has like what I would consider to be like almost like a NASCAR style livery on it. Sure. But it's on a Rocket Bunny RX-7. And that's so sick. I mean, last night I was at Larry's event and they had the they had a NASCAR there, the Miller Genuine Draft NASCAR mm -hmm. that Ray Service owns, and we were talking about the Pennzoil livery on the NASCAR and just how iconic that there's not like a hundred other brands on there. Mm -hmm. It's just like Good. one big Pennzoil, yeah. and that's how racing used to be. The Miller Genuine Draft car, just massive Miller Genuine Draft logo, Tide, mm -hmm. just huge Tide logo, yep. Interstate Batteries, Pennzoil, still one of the only teams that is just boldly throwing the logo on there without a whole bunch of other convoluted sponsors, which is pretty rad. This thing is sick. So an FC, why an FC? I know, well, I mean, 
the FDs, FDs obviously yeah, make a lot of yeah. sense. Was Shop, it Shops and Masks are moving? Actually, um, at SEMA oh, two years ago when we, when we debuted this car um, in Penzoil's booth, uh, they made a really cool FC um, rendering as like a like a surprise for me, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh my god, now I have to build it. Dang. So reach out to Mirasan, asked him to do a version two of the Rocket Bunny, mm -hmm. and the car came together. And the crazy part is that I wanted to do something really special with this car because everyone talks about how rotaries can't use synthetic motor oils. Obviously, I do in all my cars. Yeah, true. So we did a, a 13B peripheral port, 10,000 RPM, crazy NA motor, running synthetic motor oil, no break-in, like straight to the dyno after we started the car, no oil cooler, like legit to put the car through its paces and the car rips. So. Sick, yeah, I mean. This thing is really rad. I remember seeing it. I actually didn't even know this car was going to be at SEMA uh, last year. And I was just casually walking down like one of the outside rows and mm -hmm. I saw it and I was like, it's obviously awesome. <laughs> Johnny's. I mean, it's so sick. But yeah, yeah, this thing is awesome, dude. It's so rad. I mean, it looks like, I mean, it looks like an OG NASCAR, but as a Rocket Bunny RX-7. That's yeah. so sick. This thing is, oh, I yeah. mean, everybody knows this car. Um, this has been uh, all over the internet everywhere. You have a matching white one that you race, yeah. right? Yeah. So, um, but this one just uh, it stands out a lot because I mean, it's bright, um, <laughs> which is so rad. I love this color. And I feel like the RX-7 is one of the only Japanese cars from this era that can pull off a bright color, yeah. like Porsches and this. But this is a massive turbo. This yeah. is insane. With three rotor engine, hood exit exhaust, loud, obnoxious, just like me. Perfect. This thing is wild, and I have seen this in uh, in action, um, and it is it spits a lot of flames. It's very loud. Uh, it draws like the most insane crowd all of the time. <laughs> like even before it comes off the trailer, people are like, "I know what's happening next." Like <laughs> this thing is gonna pop, and yeah, it is. It's really sick, and uh, man, yeah. Hell yeah. Well, the plan next year is to put the car to significantly more reuse. I mean, you've seen the white car traveling the whole country with yeah, yeah. last two years. Now it's time for this guy to have some fun too. So So um, what are you gonna do with this? Drift it? Time attack fire. it? Drift. Drift? Yes. Man, he's doing it all. I mean if you look around, I got a lot of tires to burn. That is a lot of tires, <laughs> man. What size are these, buddy old pal? I know. Gee, um, buddy. Most are 29530 that are mm. that are uh, special spec. Yep. Um, and then also I have 27535, which is the drift spec compound. Mm. So I have some fun to play with. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's going to be crazy next year. You know, runs a 27535. You did? <laughs> it can do it. I run a 265 because that is what's available through um, some other manufacturers of tires. But... 275, 275 is like the goaded tire for the R32 GTO. Okay. The R33, you can go to 285. That's then you, then you can step it up because the R33, even more so than the R34, is more room for tire. Well, yeah, maybe but, uh, we'll have to do some, some events together and yeah. uh, a set will go missing. I don't know. That's definitely already <laughs> happening. But, um, and then you got, what's that back there? Um, this is actually Tommy's new FD, oh. um, covered by parts and mishmash of stuff. Nice. Um, Tommy's been my teammate with Red Bull Team Magic for yeah. many, many years, and I've got him, gotten him addicted to rotaries. He just got my RX-8, and then right after he bought my RX-8, he bought an FD. So I'm going to help him get this car together. Uh, we got a crazy deal on it. It was like $14,000. That's an insane deal. Yeah. I mean, yep. motors are ten grand right now. Yep. So um, it's sitting here in Toyota, to Florida. That's crazy. Also, the RX-8, I will say, is like... You're like one of, there's two people that I've ever seen make an RX-8 look really cool. Yours and then East from 405 Motoring. I don't know oh, if you've yeah. seen his. Mm -hmm. That one was pretty rad too. Those cars I think are gonna, those cars are gonna make uh, like a list of cars that people should have bought a long time ago. Yeah. Eventually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel I like it's the same way, like Labor of Love. Out of, out of nowhere, all the BMW 3 Series right now are getting really popular in the drift scene. Yep. It's like... I think that in the right amount of time, just like the Miata took off, RX-8 is going to take off again too. Yeah, it's and a cool car. Yeah. Yeah, it's a cool car. Well, sick. We are going to knock out some Pennzoil content uh, for this really quick to uh, help send off uh, the giveaway car with Advanced Auto Parts. So uh, what's going to knock this out right now? I see so you got a bunch of Red Bulls. I'm going to take a Red Bull from yeah, you. Sure. <laughs> and then And then we're going to knock this out. It's Thursday, not a super crazy day here today at the office, not a lot going on. Spent a lot of work, a lot of emails, lots of meetings, tons of phone calls. I've talked to so many people on the phone today. 
uh, that I'm losing my voice. But there are some cars uh, coming in and showing up here at Top Rank. This one, this white R32 GTR, which I showed you guys earlier in the week, is finally together. Uh, I'm loving the way this thing looks. My kind of dream is to get an R32 GTR uh, to leave in Japan after my R34 GTR gets imported. And while the goal has always been to go back to having a gunmetal R32, um, I've been driving this one around, I like it so much. Uh, as I see the white one more and more, I just, man, it looks so clean. I have my white R33 over there. It would be kind of cool to see them as a pair there. Uh, I've always been kind of known for having silver cars, so a silver 32 would be good, but the good news is my R34 GTR isn't eligible for import for maybe like another, I don't know, nine months, so I have some time to kind of start thinking about that. But two cars did show up uh, today that are really cool that I wanted to give you guys a first early look at. They are this Bayside Blue R34 GTR V-Spec and a Millennium Jade GTT. So the Bayside Blue R34 GTR V-Spec is on Nismo LMGT4 wheels. Love these wheels. Stock body, stock side skirt, stock fender, stock bumper. Does have the little Nismo pillar garnish on it, which this is super cool. Otherwise, an overall pretty stock car minus the exhaust. It is a V-Spec, uh, so that's kind of cool. Has the rear diffuser uh, as a V-Spec should. This car, I think, will be a pretty popular car. It's going to be kind of expensive, probably in the 190 to 195 range, I'm guessing. Next to it, though, uh, as, a, as a bargain option, there is a Millennium Jade GTT. Now, this looks a lot like a GTR, especially because it is in that GTR-only color, Millennium Jade. Uh, but it does have, like, the Urus rear bumper and the Urus side skirts, which, again... I keep telling Blake is going to look so sick on his GTT. This one also has the R34 GTR style front bumper. So this looks like it would be like a Z-Tune or S-Tune front bumper, but this is just a GTR style bumper. So you see that there's kind of some bigger gaps in there than you'd think that you would need. Also doesn't have the correct grill. Uh, looks like it's still using the, the OEM hood, but everything fits together really nicely on this car. So this will be a popular one. Also, this is one of two Millennium J GTTs that we have on the way. Um, the first one that we got was really popular. So we found a couple more of them and I expect these will both go quite quickly as well. So the next stage after getting a car in like this is getting them fully into our inventory. So part of that is getting them cleaned up, putting them on the lifts, re-inspecting them, double checking all the maintenance and service that was done in Japan. Taka takes them out and test drives them. Uh, and then we detail them for photos. Andrew takes them and shoots them. We put them on the website and then uh, list all the maintenance, the service, all the information and history that we have on the car. And then hopefully one of you guys buy it. So again, quick little look at these two cars. Uh, my day is not totally over yet though. Um, I'm heading up to downtown Los Angeles where uh, my buddy Cam is uh, speaking, hosting a little event uh, in collaboration with a like a, a record store, which I think would be pretty cool. Uh, I'm guessing it's gonna be like watches, records, guitars, and air-cooled Porsches, which sounds super dope to me. So depending on how that is, might drop a little bit of that in the video here. Otherwise, it has been another uh, normal day at the office here today with cars both coming and going. Lots of customer inquiries. Tomorrow is Friday, so it'll be another long day uh, for certain I'm sure and uh, another weekend filled with car events not going to grid life because the Skyline GTR is still uh, in need of a good amount of work which maybe I will dip back into the shop right now and check on and see what if any progress is getting made Here it is. Still on the lift. Engine out. Though it does look like the trans is getting ready to come out. That'll be the next big step. Swapping things over. 
and getting ready for the next round of Nissan Challenge in three weeks. All right guys, Blake's on his way down. What we are doing is a little bit of content creation today. That's important for top rank also. Have to make sure that people know we have these cars, see these cars. Part of doing that is YouTube, part of doing that is Instagram, Instagram Reels, photography, video, all of that kind of stuff. So we're getting the Midnight Purple R34 GTR and the blue R34 GTR cleaned up right now so we can go out and get some video of that. All right, so before Blake does his thing, here is a quick little look at what both of these cars are like. This car is currently in our inventory right now. It's on black LM GT4s. Uh, the Bayside Blue car arrived yesterday, also on LM GT4s. This car will be on our website as soon as we get around to properly photographing it and Taka goes through and does his intake inspection. All the maintenance and service has already been done in Japan, but that doesn't mean something could have possibly happened in transport. So part of our process is double checking everything on the lift before it goes on the website. So we know when we price the car, it's priced accordingly. There's no big surprises that are gonna happen when someone comes to buy the car and we find out, oh man, it needs an extra couple thousand dollars worth of work. We get all of that out of the way ahead of time. So when you come by the car, you already know that everything on it is working. This car needs to go through that process. This one's already done. So if you're looking for a Midnight Purple 2 R34 GTR on LM GT4s, it's on our website now. All right, so we've got both cars pulled out here. Again, doing a little filming with these, a little video, some stuff for YouTube, some stuff for Instagram. But these cars are both seriously so rad. Uh, the question and topic of the video is which one would you pick? I mean, between Bayside Blue and Midnight Purple 2, it's seriously hard to go wrong. But the Midnight Purple in the sun is just almost unbeatable. It's so crazy how complex this paint and the color really is, especially for, you know, 1999. You know, I guess 1998, technically, when the car was being designed and developed. But it's so crazy to see the light hit this in so many different ways. So perfect. And then over here, Bayside Blue, I mean, it just pops in the sun also. Like, that's one thing about a lot of Nissan colors is that it's almost difficult to truly appreciate them until you see them really directly in the sunlight like this and get a chance to kind of see how well the colors they chose actually work with the body lines. Something that makes uh, the GTRs absolutely really unique is just how well the colors tend to work with them. So Blake's gonna film some stuff. I'm gonna do some talking pieces. We're gonna put these together. We have one other car that I showed you guys in the vlog yesterday that's pretty interesting also um, that is going to get a little bit of video love. And that is this white R32 GTR. Um, I like this car a lot, and like I said, I'm considering another R32. Color choices, you know, are up in the air, but man, after seeing this one, you know, white with the R34 GTR wheels, so sick, and the Nismo bumper like I like. The only thing I would add to this is maybe the N1 or Nismo style side skirts and rear spats to kind of give it a little bit more of that aggressive look that I think the R32 needs, especially given that it already has the bumper in proper, you know, uh, rear lip spoiler to, to make those parts work together. Um, so that's it. Another one that just showed up is this S15 Spec R. So this one is a little crazy, has kind of like a battle arrow look to it, has the fiberglass front fenders, really aggressive side skirts. It's got over fenders in the back. So, um, you know, for my personal taste, um, this is a little, a little too much going on, but I do really like it. And I think that this is kind of what most people that are looking for an S15 spec R have in their head. You know, um, S15s, when you see them and they're popping on the internet, this is basically exactly what they look like. Right next to it, we have another one that is stock arrow, um, has a different side skirt, a little bit of a different bumper on it, but this is much closer to the factory arrow. Um, and factory look to a car and again next to it another millennium j gtt that blake and i have been scoping out as he kind of gets things underway on his so uh do a little filming wrap that up and uh see what else the day holds for us all right we are packed up for the week it has been a long week again but uh cars are in the warehouse for the weekend lots of new stuff came in this week so lots of new stuff coming to the website next week uh the week is not totally over for me yet because i do still need to go to a few car events this weekend 
So it looks like there's gonna be a cars and coffee tomorrow morning that I'm going to. A bunch of guys are here from Japan. So we're gonna try to meet them over there. Tomorrow night is a uh, beach barbecue party for Brecky Car Club. So as a member, I'm gonna go to that. And then I'm sure there's some more stuff on Sunday. So uh, packed up for the weekend. Kind of crazy that we fit so many of these in here, but uh, say goodbye to these for the weekend and come back to it uh, here on Monday. But on to tomorrow. All right, guys, we are starting our weekend Saturday morning here at Good, Bob, Good Boy Bob Coffee in Santa Monica. We're meeting up with some guys from Avance uh, and some other people that are members of Avance, uh, which is kind of like a car community up and down the West Coast. We got the R33 GTR out. Uh, Blake's gonna be meeting us here and we are gonna go do a little cruise uh, through Malibu and uh, probably grab some pizza and stuff afterwards. But first, need some coffee. All right, so our second stop is Calamigos Ranch. Making moves around here. Got a little Z31 parked next to me. We've got some people that have shown up already. The Evo, uh, AMG, Miata the Tundra, so a handful of other cars on the way, but we're gonna go check this place out, get some more coffee. So this is the little chill area here. Dude's out here kicking it. It's just a little like, I don't know, nature-y thing, but pretty rad. More a little chill area. This is this is how the wealthy uh, uh, stay-at-home horse moms in LA live. Yep. It's a cool little coffee shop here to grab some more coffees after already having more coffee. Not that I condone filming while driving, but I had to show you this view. This is the Malibu Canyons, and uh, it is so sick. Uh, right now, we're coming from the sunlight down back into the marine layer. You can see all the clouds, so it looks pretty, pretty rad, but this is part of the reason that driving up here is so popular. All right, so the weekend continues. Here with Steve Ellis. I'm getting my I'm an appearance on the Brian get my blog. Brian O'Connor on tonight. We are <laughs> gonna go mob around LA. Got some of the boys together here. Uh, got some cars out. Elvin's idea was this terrible location, but we were at a much cooler spot earlier. But uh, Steve's got the R33 GTR out here creeping. Got the. Uh, Subaru and of course my R33 GTR pulled up for the night. All right, what's the plan? The route. So we go here to the 10, 10 to the 4 or 5, 4 or 5 to the 110, and then we figure y'all are already down here, so y'all might break off down this way and we'll just come back up. Yeah, oh, all right. So we'll break off. Womp. So this is uh, one of my favorite little photo shoot spots. It's down here at the port and uh, it's a little dicey back here, but it looks so sick. Uh, this is actually where they did the Tokyo Drift scene. Uh, we're just learning how to drift. It was not in Japan, it was actually right here. So uh, I'm gonna get some photos here and then probably call it a night. All right, so it's Sunday and we're winding down the week uh, here inside Blake's garage. Got the Subaru chilling here. This is uh, when Blake's not driving the truck or working on the skyline. Uh, this is the this is the Blake Mobile. It's got a pretty rad garage set up here. All the spare tires. Got the OG Fast and Furious posters in here, which makes for some great garage decor. Got a little YouTube going on over here. Uh, and then Neil from last week's video is down here working on the Civic. What are you doing? I'm trying to fix this wiring harness to see if I have to just scrap it and buy a new one. Oh dang! We'll that is see. usually how it goes. What's what's the goal for the project today? Um, decide whether or not I know what I'm doing and move from there. Dang. Well. To be continued. To be continued. Uh, one little shameless plug here at the end. I see Blake has a diehard little uh, work chair seat thing there. Um, this week I'll be posting uh, about the giveaway for Pennzoil, uh, Advanced Auto Parts, and Die Hard Tools. Uh, where my buddy Johnny is giving away his brand new GR86. Uh, purchase some Pennzoil, you can enter to win uh, just by uploading your receipt, and maybe you will get a car that is just like super perfect and totally finished, unlike any of ours, where we all have so much work to do. You could just win, you could just win like literally a perfect car, and then uh, you could go to the track anytime that you wanted because it wouldn't be broken, and you could go to any car show that you want because it would run properly, 
and you'd be in a way better spot than all of us. But um, lots more to work on uh, on actually all of our cars next week and uh, some stuff I need to help get done for Niels with some parts from Gretty, uh, some engine stuff for Blake. And then uh, I have to go check up on the Supra and put the engine back in my R32 GTR so I can be ready for the next round of Nissan Challenge. But uh, we are gonna kick it here for the rest of the night. Work on some cars, drink some beers, watch some college football and some YouTube, and we will see you guys next week.